Okay, so before we get into today's video, just want to say why I'm not putting up too many blacksmithing videos at the moment. Uh, I didn't really want to have to get into it, but I've had several people ask where are the blacksmithing videos. Um, I've torn two of my four rotator cuff muscles in my right arm, um, and obviously that's my, my hammering arm. Um, the hammering is obviously irritating it, so I'm trying to do as little as possible. Um, those of you who suffer with rotator cuff issues know exactly how painful and debilitating it can be. Um, you can't sleep on it because it's uncomfortable, you can't move and get comfortable. There's, there's just all sorts of things and it's, you get weakness, even just doing stupid things like this, picking up a cup of tea from a distance can do it. Um, and there's not an awful lot I can do about it. They won't operate unless it goes completely, which I hope it doesn't because that's five months off work. Um, they don't heal, so all I can do is try and do some exercises to strengthen up the muscles around it to try and hold it in place. So hence the reason I'm not doing too much. I'm trying to let it rest um, a little bit. But there you go, so that's, that's the reason. So anyway, let's get on to today's video. It's uh, a handle, some furniture, for some windows I've been making. I've been doing these windows for on and off for a couple of weeks and I'm getting fed up with them. I really want to get them out of the shop now. And the last little bit is um, forging the handles, which normally they send me a sample, these people, but they haven't sent me a sample and they want me to try and match it from a photograph and it's, it's difficult. So this is my attempt and see what you think as to whether it's going to match up. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so these are the windows. This is one of them, obviously. Um, not all that big, but they're quite complicated. I've done the stay already. That was pretty fiddly. The hinges, and there's like three or four different angle iron frames. There's one big angle iron frame around the outside, one frame on the inside, and then another th frame on the inside of that. Um, and you've got this drip strip at the top, about an inch and a half out over the top, a 10 mil frame around the outside of that as well. So it's all a bit fiddly, but we're getting there. And I'm, as I say, I just want to get it out of the shop now. And this was all I was given, a poor photograph with the dimensions of the windows. There's three of them, two openers and a, a fixed. And some of these photos. Now these are the better photos that were sent to me. The first lot were so dark you couldn't actually see what it was. And you still can't really get much of an idea from these. So anyway, I did manage to work out from the photographs this. And I scaled, scaled it up and did it on the computer. Stuck it onto a bit of plate and cut it out of this 4 mil. Formula is just real nice sort of plate. It's just a, that little bit chunkier than the three. Going to last a bit longer. Because I'm lazy, I made these bits. These are the sort of the business end of the handles. Um, just two bits around and a bit of square in the middle welded together. Then these were just bolts with some weld welded around the top and then ground down to make little domes. So what we've got to try and make. If I can find it, is that now it's convex and concave. Um, it, if that makes sense, it's convex one way, concave there, and convex on the other side. And I'm just really sort of struggling as to the best way to do it. I think, and see, it's, it's it's comes out as well. It goes at all sorts of different angles. And they, you know, they want me to match it up. And see there, I can't tell whether that's three and a half or four inches or what. You know, the way the tape measure's been photographed. Anyway, this was my first attempt. I, I did this first thing this morning when I got here, which is rubbish. It's too small and it's a bit tatty. So we're going to try again. Now I've got sort of an idea of what I'm doing. So let's have a go. I'm going to start off with half inch square and of course sod's law I haven't got any half inch square in the place I've had to use this which is a was a, a tool of some sort I think it was for my gas torch for 
making circles. Anyway, that's what we're going to use. So let's get it warm. And the first thing I'm going to do is taper it down. Um, so it's about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch maybe at the end. Fair length of taper. You can see I don't really want to be doing too much of that hammering with my shoulder. Um, my perfect idea would be that my landlord would come up, come up one day and say, I found you a bit much bigger shop and I can get in there, get myself a, a little power hammer that can take out all the main hammering work and I can just tickle about doing the, the small stuff. So right, I'm going to carry on tapering that down a little bit. And it's down to about, I don't know, not quite quarter at the end I think. Now I'm going to flatten it one way. That's <laughs> that's my attempt of the, at the start of it. What I'm going to do now is I've got this half round tool which came out of an army job lot years and years ago. I don't think I've ever used it. I've given that a bit of a wire brush up. It's about inch diameter. Then I'm just going to use the uh, cross pane to sort of beat it into the the round. So hopefully I'm spreading it out because at the widest it wants to be just under an inch, about seven eighths. And see the back is, is rounding off. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. So getting it hollow on the, this side and rounded on the other side. Ideally I'd like a, someone to help me then they could strike and I could hold a, a bit of round in there. That would take half the time I think. Or have a power hammer. <laughs> That scale off of there. I want to come back. I want to make it. I'm not quite sure how long it is. You see that chalk mark on the anvil? That's how long I think I want it. That's about three quarters of an inch longer than the first one I did, which wasn't long enough. You see how that's coming. I don't, don't want that taper to get too wide. I want to leave that fairly narrow. And it's going to go, have to get fairly thin as well. Now I'm just trying to work the... You can see that right hand side as you're looking at it, I'm just working it, now the left hand side as you're looking at it, working it out to the edges, so that those edges will be obviously much thinner. Just trying to get me width. I think if I used 5.8 it would be too fat, so I think half inch is going to be about right. It's just got a little bit of a twist in it. I might have to try and get that out. And we're almost there. That's the length I want to be. In fact, that is there. And I just want to tidy it up a little bit more. But before we start bending it, I'm just going to get as much scale and muck off the back as I can because that bit's going to be difficult to clean up once it's bent. So I'm just going to get it sort of cleanish now. I might as well get the front sort of cleanish as well. 
just have the least amount of scale on it as possible. See the hammer marks I've left in there. Right, so what we're going to do first is try and coil that tape around um, or the tip not the tape, or the tip of the tape around and get a nice little hook on it just again using the cross pane just so I don't damage it too much That's about it. You see, that's that's all I'm going to do. Just a tiny little hook, and then we're going to use the cross pane again to bend that round. And hopefully, we'll get the right sort of shape. And I'm just going to cool the tip out so I can hammer it on there. As it turns out, I shouldn't have done that. You'll see why in a second. Now you can see there exactly why I shouldn't have done that because we've got to flatten it. See there. So I'm going to have to try and warm it up and get that out before we go any further. I don't want that in there. It's going to look nasty. So I'm going to do it again and this time not cool it out and just try and tease that very end round. Just try and take that flat out. You see I haven't really. It's now well it's taken the flat out but it's made a a bit of a bulge in the middle. This is actually quite thin um, so it doesn't need much hammering. See that's not too bad. I've sort of got it out but I want to get it hot up the top there and get a bit more shape from there, from that top. Now that's a little bit thicker up there, so you need a little bit more oomph. Give it a bit more beans. So that's not too bad. I think I'm probably going to leave it at that. That's sort of okay. So now what we've got to do, I've got to bend the whole thing off sort of about 35, maybe 45 degrees one way so that it's sticking out from the window so you can get your, your greasy little mitt behind it to open the window. I'm just using my bending fork there but that's not actually working very well so I'm just going to try and keep my hammer really flat. and uh, bend it around that way. It's not enough. I think I'm going to need some more. Do the same again, I think the hammer. That's possibly enough. Don't know. Might be enough. I'm gonna leave it like that for now, I think. Clean it up and see how we get on. Alright, I've worked out roughly where I want to cut it. I'm just gonna zip it off with the uh, angle grinder. Whilst I was away, I made the other one. So, I'm just going to whip that one off as well. Obviously, pointing the opposite direction because it's uh, handed. But first of all, I'm just going to clean that one up. I didn't clean this one up after I'd finished it. Just give it a little bit of a 
go over. All right, let me just whip that one off. Whoever invented these thin slitting discs wants a medal. They're wonderful little gadgets. Right, so, skip to uh, welding it all up. I'm going to try and just hold this in place, sort of eyeball it in place and just put a, a tack. That's got it. And we'll have a little look, see if it's about right. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. Let's see if we can weld that up proper. I would say I'm getting the hang of this uh, TIG lock, but I'm going to struggle a bit, I think. It's um, it's fine on the flat. I'm doing quite well with it on the flat, but when you can't prop very easily, my shaky old hands. And now what's happened there? I can't, couldn't push the pedal down. I wasn't getting enough juice out of it. And I've just looked down and seen that my pedal had got um, the gas tube running underneath it. So as I was pushing the pedal down, I wasn't getting it full, fully down. So I'm going to start again. Now we've got some juice coming out of it. And of course, it's looking a bit nasty now. Never mind, I'll run a bit more over that in a minute and then we'll uh, grind it all up. You'll never notice. One thing I really love about TIG is that you don't get the splatter um, from like the MIG. Um, clean it makes cleaning up so much easier. It really does. And that one's a bit better. the sides. I like these great big uh, shrouds as well. It's got one of those uh, gas things in it. Yeah, oh, that's a bit better that one. Um, Actually, I could probably put a bigger nozzle on this one. I've got quite a small one on at the moment because I was using it where I needed to get in a bit of a, a, a gap. But I've only got a massive one because the one in between I smashed, dropped it on the floor and bang, that ceramic goes like, well, ceramic. Buy myself a few more. There you go, that's not too bad. By the time they're ground up, you'd never notice. So I'm just going to do quickly do the other one. See if we can get that one tacked on. Obviously, this one's going the opposite direction. to me. I'm putting a bit more on this one, building it up a bit. 
which I will go back and do on the other one. A bit more to grind off, so it's going to blend in a bit better to the um, body of the handle. I'll do the same on this one. blend it not quite so nice but say so once it's ground up nobody will notice just want to make sure it's penetrated and got it One more side, and we can do some grinding. Oh, that's hot. That is very hot. Quick. So you can't actually sort of prop on the handle because it's too blooming hot. What I should have done was um, put it in the other side of the vise and propped on the vise, but there's too much crap in the way of my workshop to get to the other side of the vise. Never mind. Right, so we can hopefully do a bit of grinding. Another great invention, the flat discs. Whoever came up with that idea. There's lots of sanding and grinding solutions out there. You'd be surprised at uh, the amount that you don't know about. I was doing a bit of research for some grinding solutions the other day and Oh, I found all sorts of things I'd never seen before. A lot of them are very expensive, but uh, you know, if you've got a specific job, yeah, you know, that's still hot, very hot. I'm going to try and blend it seamlessly into the parent material. Oh, that's the idea anyway. You can't really get a good appreciation of it there. There's lots of shadows and lights and stuff on there but it doesn't look too bad. I will probably end up filing it up a little bit towards the end. probably do me. Just to really blend them in, the joins in properly. I've just got a little chainsaw file and I'm just rounding the edges off a little bit. I'll make it all blend together. Take all the sharp edges off. Take out some of the real grinding marks. I want to leave a lot of the forging marks there because at the end of the day it is supposed to be handmade. I don't want it looking like it's come out of a container come straight from China. I want it to look like it's come out of a forge. Although it probably doesn't quite so much with the way I've 
fabricated it rather than forged it, but hey ho, you know why. These are great, these little chainsaw files. I use them for all sorts of things. I'm like sharpening knives and getting in these little corners. You can go, that's quite a big one. You can go right down to about eighth of an inch. You know, sort of eight, three sixteenths, quarter, by 32, all sorts of sizes. All right, that'll just about do, I think. By the time it's been uh, gone over with this, they'll wire brush that takes a lot of the um, tooling marks out of things this will also be I'm guessing either powder coated or painted of some description so by the time they've got a primer on and a top coat and all the rest of it that will disguise a lot of the tool marks but it hopefully won't take away the making marks as it were, the forging marks. Right now I need a couple of washers so I'm using a bit of this 4mm plate and a hole saw just to make a couple of washers that are going to go at the back of the handles between the handle and the back plate just to space it out from the window a little bit. That's another good tool. These hole saws. Cheap as chips and they last for ages if you treat them right. right. You keep a bit of cutting fluid on them. Don't run them too fast. Um, I was hoping that would drop out but it hasn't so I'm going to have to force it out. That one won't go in. Let's find a drill that will fit. Of course it's going to be awkward, isn't it? Here we go. One nice little washer. I'm going to have to drill the centre out. But essentially that's it. Nice fat washer. Got it? Number two. Of course that one's going to be awkward as well, isn't it? After the time when you use one of these tools, they drop out as you lift the, the uh, blade out of the material. But of course, because you want that bit this time. There we go. So, two little washers. That's a bit hot, that one. I'm going to just drill out the centre to 8mm because that's what size bolt I used for the pin I just welded around the, t the head with some MIG stuck it in the lathe and got the grinder on it and just domed it off there we go, two little washers So there we go, that's how they're going to go together. I think they sort of look like the pictures. See the washer at the back there, just spaces it away from the, the frame a bit. I shall eventually cut that off and weld that in. But the next job will be to weld these onto the frame. So that's going to be the next 
thing to do. And they don't look too bad. I think I'll get away with it. As I say, if they don't send me a sample, if it's not right, I'm not doing it again. It's their fault. Alright, so I'm just going to tack this on to the frame. It's got to go in the middle of the frame. Um, you know, halfway up, halfway down, obviously. Um, and we'll see how we get on. Right, that's pulling it down too much. I'll leave that off. Put another tack on the other side. Turn this over, I think, and tack. Or will I do this side? I'm not sure yet. Hang on, let's have a, have a look at it, make sure it's all lining up. Yeah, well, it's all lining up, okay, so I'm going to do this back side first. Now, I'm almost using like the lay wire technique here. Some of you will know what that is, some of you might not. It's just where you literally lay the wire on the job and melt it all together. Rather than dabbing it in the puddle. And you can't see from there, but that's actually gone very well for me, one of my welds. I just need practice, it's because I don't do enough TIG work. Um, you know, it's predominantly my work is uh, MIG. So, yes, I'm just having a look at it because I'm quite pleased with that. Only trouble is, it's pulled. So I've got to get it down. I thought the two tacks on the back might have held it enough, but obviously not. And now it's not really going back the other way because the, the angle iron is flexing too much. So I'm just going to try and hold the angle, a pair of grips, and give it a belt so that it actually goes. Let's have a look at that. That looks better, I think. So we'll turn it over and do the other side. Alright, so we've got it upside down now. Oh, I've got trouble with that pedal again. Oh no, that's what it was. No, it was the. Uh, I didn't have a me earth on. I thought it was trouble with the pedal again. I keep doing this. It's um, all the cables and things on the floor get stuck under the pedal, and you're pushing down, thinking, "Where's the amps?" And nothing's happening. And that's exactly what happened again there. Again, I'm basically just laying the wire in in front of the the arc and it's just melting it all together and again that don't look too bad for me Another one I'm quite pleased with for TIG. I'm that pleased with it. I'll try and zoom in and let you have a little look. No, push it the other way. Yep, I'm pleased with that. Of course you won't see it now because it's all ground up. And now I'm just putting the handle on. Just fitted it all up. I've put a piece of paper 
literally a piece of paper folded in half underneath just to give it a bit of a spacer just so it doesn't tighten up too much building it up a bit because it got a bit low that's better that's it, you can see the handle moves quite nicely that's with even with the paper in there still I should pull that out in a minute Just grind that lump of snot off That's it, that'll do. Gone. Wire brush. Of course that lot won't be seen really because the window will be in front of that. The glass. So, here we go. It's done at last. So there's the stay. There's the handle. I had to put a little piece of eighth in there with a and taper it down from virtually nothing up to eighth, just to uh, make it shut properly, which was quite a common thing that they did on these windows. Opens up and the stay goes onto its little. Peg. And there you go. I'll be glad to see the back of these once they've got stained glass, or not stained glass, that uh, leaded lights in there. I think they'll look quite nice once they're all painted up black and put in wherever they're going. But I think we'll get away with it. I don't know how close to the originals these are going. And I'm hoping that uh, they will be pleased with them. So that's another little job done and dusted. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.